Hi guys, I've been wanting to make this video for ages, but I've had to wait, but today is the day I get to show you the final cover of my new book, The Beginning of the World, in the middle of the night, which is coming out on the 2nd of November, and not only that, but today I get to read you the first few pages as well, which I'm really excited to do. Those of you who've been following me a while know that I am an author, I was an author before I started this booktube channel, and my new book, The Beginning of the World, in the middle of the night, is my sixth book, but it is my first book of fiction for grown-ups. Those of you who've been watching my videos recently will know that my publisher produced two sets of proofs for this book. I felt very, very spoiled. So proofs are sent out as early review copies and they were the same inside, but there were two different covers to reflect the title. So we had a day proof and a night proof. The cover illustrations are done by H, who's an illustrator that we love because she did a series of paintings called Things That Fit Inside a Heart, which I'll link in the description box down below. The first story in the collection, which is one I'm going to be reading you an extract from in a minute, is set in a world where love is dwindling, where hearts are created in heart factories, and it's all a bit twisted and strange. So we knew that we wanted an anatomical heart at the centre of the cover, but not in a cutesy kind of way, because it's not a cute story. <laughs> a lot of you have been emailing me and asking whether we've picked the day proof or the night proof as the final cover, but actually, the answer is neither, because we designed the final cover before we designed the proofs, and the proofs take elements from the final cover. So. When H was going away to illustrate the cover, I went through the stories and picked out all of the key images in each story and sent them to her so that she knew what things she could pick from to highlight. Um, and she's done such a stunning job. I'm looking down here because I'm looking at it. <laughs> so what I wanna do is show you the final cover and talk you through a couple of elements. So, you ready? This is what it looks like here. And I am so in love with it. We have got the night sky from the night proof and planets and stars. One, because one of the stories, the title story is set in the middle of the night, but also because one of the stories is about the discovery of a new planet, which might signal the end of the world. We have, as I said, a heart right in the middle because of the first story, but within that heart, we've got all these intricate illustrations. My favorite cover for a book especially for a short story collection which contains so many different images and themes. It's a cover that highlights different elements throughout the stories so that once you've finished the book, you can come back to it again and notice those things. So I don't wanna point out too many things in this cover because half of the fun of the cover is discovering those things for yourself. But what I will say is that one of the stories is set in a summer camp for teenagers who are sprouting plants in their organs. So as you can see, there's lots of images of body and flowers. I've also made a little mock-up cover here. Um, Two Roads sent me a cover that I could stick over another book so I could show you the dimensions of what it looks like. So this isn't actually my book on the inside. It's Paul King's North's Beast in this Paul King's North's Beast in Disguise, but this is the size it's gonna be. It's also gonna be a naked hardback, so it won't have a dust jacket. So the front cover, and then the spine is very beautiful, and then the back looks like this, which has the blurb and some quotes on. So the blurb is, stories of family and magic, lost souls and superstition, spirits and jam jars, mini apocalypses, animal hearts, and sideshows. Mermaids are on display at the local aquarium, a girl runs a coffin hotel on a remote island, and a couple are rewriting the history of the world in the middle of the night. And if you would like to know what some authors have been saying, I will leave some quotes in the description box. But it seems weird to read those out loud because it is if I'm praising myself. So I'm gonna leave those in the description box down below. But that is what it looks like. I am so, so, so happy with it. If you would like to pre-order a copy of the book, pre-orders massively help out authors and publishers. It would mean the world to me. So I'm gonna leave some links in the description box down below. You can of course order in at your local bookshop as well if you're in the UK or Ireland. If you're in English language bookshops in Europe, they should be able to order in. And also it will be available in Australia and New Zealand. We don't have a North American release date yet, but you can order the UK edition on Book Depository with free international shipping, which will be linked Below. Now you might be sitting there thinking, Jen, I like your YouTube channel and I like the cover of your book, but I don't know if I like your writing style, so I'm not going to be pre-ordering your book until I know what the writing style is like. And that's a fair enough point. So as I said, I'm going to now read you an extract from the beginning of the book. So the first story, as I said, is the one that has hearts in it. It's about a world where love is dwindling and it's a little bit creepy. Are you ready? It's called Animals. These days, you can find anything you need at the click of a button. That's why I bought her heart online. 
It was delivered this morning along with my groceries, tucked inside a cardboard box, red oozing out the sides. They tied a half-hearted bow around the edges, a tag with promises of customer satisfaction and a 30-day warranty. Our hearts have played classical music from the moment they begin to grow, bred to love, built to last. It is crimson. I lift it out and the heart spreads itself across my palm like an octopus. I tickle one of its valves and it flops down onto the kitchen counter, panicking. I pick it up again. I've heard other men talk of fishing and hauling, of holding gasping flounder in their fists that they then throw on an open fire. Perhaps this is it. The heart flutters. There isn't anything quite like holding love in your bare hands. I read the blood-soaked leaflet stuck to the bottom of the box. This heart is from a swan. Good. They say birds are easy to tame. There, there, little one, I say. It's going to be okay. I stroke it gently with one finger and whistle bird song. It visibly calms. First things first. You need to treat hearts the same way you treat pets. That's something my mother understood just fine. You shower hearts profusely and then stop. The stopping is important. You have to wait for the heart to become desperate, wait for it to think you've forgotten all about it. Then, and only then, do you smother it again with love and affection. It's the only way. It's how hearts grow. It's how they learn to never leave your side. Hearts also need good nutrition and plenty of exercise. If you purchase one, make sure you keep it hydrated. If you're new to this, you need to buy yourself a heart case until you decide whether or not this is the one. Hearts come in all different shapes and sizes, of course, but they don't need bespoke sleeping quarters, just somewhere warm and damp, close to human skin. My mother said correctly that love can fill any room. I'd recommend keeping your heart case strapped to your chest, under your clothes, to stop dogs chasing you down the street. Make sure you buy your heart from a reputable seller too. I once bought a faulty one that took on a will of its own and tried to bury its way under my skin. I'd never felt pain like it. That was the last time I took a seller recommendation from my next door neighbour. Mind you, he's been using glass hearts for the best part of a year now and neither he nor his partner look happy about it. More for them. I slide this one heart into my heart case and hide it under my jumper, feeling the pulse of both my heart and the swan heart slightly out of sync. Love needs to be trained in warmth and rhythm and reliability. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I rinse out the box the heart came in. <laughs> Cora always likes to say, I use too much washing up liquid, but there's no harm in wanting things clean. I slot the box into the recycling. Recycling is important. You shouldn't litter the world. That's why I've kept her. Most of her, anyway. I would like to read you the whole story, but I'm gonna have to stop there. If you like this extract, and you like this channel, and you think you might wanna check this book out, please do pre-order a copy of The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. As I say, you can do so at your local bookshop, and links are also in the description box down below. I am so nervous and excited and scared to share this with you all, because rather carelessly, I feel like I've left a little piece of my soul inside this book, and I feel very, very precious about it. Um, so I'm really excited for the 2nd of November when you all get to read it. During the autumn and winter, I'm also gonna be touring, doing events, so if you'd like to come and say hello, that would be amazing. We could chat about fairy tales, because a lot of these stories have hints of fairy tale. They're not fairy tale retellings, but they are about characters who are obsessed with storytelling. Um, so come along, we can chat about fairy tales and books, and it'll be great. Links are in the description box to all of those events as well. I think that's everything. I've probably forgotten some things. I'm really excited. I hope that you're excited too. And I can't believe that this book is coming out in five weeks time. I hope that you guys have a great week and I'll speak to you really soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.